Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, eighth appointment. I would like to thank you, all of you, for the patience you have demonstrated if you have followed me so far. <laughs> uh, but anyway, chapter eight, uh, as I said in the last appointment, is dealing with uh, calculinear calculation in, of composite materials. So a general, very descriptive overview is given, some historical background, on what is the history concerning the composite material inside the finite element models, the element types that are generally used, which is in general shell, but shells, but we will see that in some cases uh, there is the need to uh, go for a better, though more complicated uh, modeling. Um, we'll see an example where, uh, ah, two examples where, actually two examples where uh, shell modeling failed to give good results. So again, sandwich panels, uh, two pictures of a uh, woven material and a UD material, mm, the way they are used, some speech about the rule of mixtures to extract some properties uh, coming from knowing the fiber uh, Young modulus and the resin Young modulus and the percentage of the two into a pre-preg, so a pre-impregnated uh, woven uh, sheet of uh, these kind of materials. Um, no, nothing is said about uh, the lamination, the classical lamination theory. Theory for this you can find in the reference some books to be consulted. But you will find anyway a lot of information on the on the internet. So we talk about the draping, for example. Um, the normal, uh, how things need to be better checked for the orientation of the element, especially for the normal, the offset, and things like that. So we start with a very simple example, again a sheet which is loaded in traction, and a couple of materials are given in terms of properties, um, both for um, elastic behavior and for resistance. And uh, some hand calculations are carried out to be compared with the uh, finite element model results wherever it's possible. And discussion about the stacking, so um, what is the importance of ha having a symmetric and balanced laminate? What happens if the laminate is not uh, balanced uh, but maybe symmetric? Um, different cases, uh, if someone wants to have uh, high axial stiffness and low bending stiffness or vice versa, so composite materials are very versatile and depending on what is the target, uh, they can be tuned to, 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 to reach it. And through these simple examples, some things are shown. Then uh, also the representation of the stresses, how the output needs to be interpreted. Um, we talk about interlaminar shear, um, which is less important for thin structures and becomes more and more important for um, thicker structures. Then we also go through um, different uh, examples again uh, with the same bar, uh, different layups, and then we also see what happens when we have a similar laminate that is similar to what has been so far illustrated, and what happens if, if we add a core, either a honeycomb or a foam. Mm -hmm. And then uh, again, what happens when we have uh, a curved beam, similar to what we see for the homogeneous material, and uh, so this can be obtained by a uh, core, a thick core, and then two. Uh, skins made out of uh, fiber and uh, matrix. Um, what happens uh, if we model it with, uh, with a shell? What happens if we model uh, the solid, the, the, the core with solids and the skins with shells? Uh, what is the best approach and uh, the mixture of the, the two philosophies? And um, also what happens if we have a 3D layered element, so something which is geometrically a solid but has uh, um, the properties of the behavior of the of a shell or 
um, a real 3D element which is layered uh, through uh, the, the thickness by a percentage rather than the exact thickness. Um, and then we come to an example, the first one, uh, where we had a failure at the test bench. So this is the follow-up, the, the, the people that are following me, um, which are in, uh, interested in Formula 1 or also other kind of motorsports will know this structure. This is the air inlet for the engine, but it's also the structure which protects the driver in case of uh, rollover of the car. So there is a normative uh, given by the regulations and this load is applied here, it's um, 120,000 newtons uh, with the same, some, some angles and so this was built first of all as a shell element and the results were uh, quite, uh, we were quite confident that even with the shell element uh, we would have passed the test, but this was not the case. So this is the structure, structure that failed. It's cut, so we can see that we have very high thickness, up to 20 millimeters, and zones with uh, solid carbon and zones with uh, nomex, as we can see in the pictures, and high curvature, etc. So it was clear that the model was not giving the proper answers, and therefore a solid one uh, was used and this was able to catch the, the effect of the lamination or breakage of the fibers. So mm, composites are difficult because the variables are many and because the processes, the, 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 the production process is many times uh, done by hand, so it has a handcraft process and so it's affected by human errors or whatever and the properties are not uh, always the same so if running, uh, building a finite element model and running a structural calculation with finite element model is anyway something that needs a lot of attention dealing with composites is even more uh, complex so you have to double the attention to pay um, one thing that I never mentioned here is that each time that you find uh, in the description of the picture uh, that it's written in blue, uh, you also find a number here. It, it means, means that, that um, there, there is, is an animation which you can see by looking at, at the end of the book. book. So, so if, if we go to page two, sheet. Here um, you have the links, so typing this into uh, any browser you will get the animation of, of that. Now we switch back to our page. And yeah, so, so we can, can see what this is happening in uh, this calculation, which was run on the linear, of course, due to the contact and the large diffraction that is taking up. Then there is a description of the two philosophies, so zone-based and implied-based, what is the advantages of the two and the, the sort of pros and cons of the two methods. And then there is another example where a shell model failed, it came, it's coming again from uh, Motorsport, uh, Formula 1 in this case, where, uh, where since the beginning of 2000, the year 2000, the specific elements of the which ones, so the, the, the elements which connect the wheel to the car, were substituted by flexible elements, the so-called flexures. And here we can see the, 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 uh, the transition between uh, the, the leg itself of the which one, which is this, and the uh, connection to the chassis or to the gearbox, depending if it is front or rear, which is then this. So this part is the flexure. Uh, which needs to be thin to bend, but need to be strong to resist to the action loads. So, in this particular case, in, at the test bench, we had a failure of the, the, this area here, where the um, outer plies were detaching from the rest of the, of the package. Um, 
So shell model was not good enough. Another way would be to have uh, uh, 3D layered elements, but again, this would have not um, been representing the reality in, 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 in what it is actually it is. So it will, would have not been able to have a sheet covering this uh, package like uh, it is actually. So we had to go through uh, a real 3D modeling, so each ply is modeled with 3D elements. So the outcome of this, we see that at a certain point, a uh, mm, stress normal to the to the flexure or to the plane, the transition plane, is becoming too high for the resin. And uh, this is what has generated the failure. It's a peeling stress in the end, which exactly peeled off the outer ply. We, can, we will come back on this example when we deal with uh, the simulation of the damage in chapter 16, to see how we can simulate what has really happened. And uh, finally, uh, just a pure, uh, let's say, not stupid, but uh, and even not trivial, but it's just a tube undergoing pure torsion. What would we use? Either one weave at 45 or two unidirectional at plus and minus 45. And here are some examples on the, what is the, the two the two modeling techniques or production techniques will give rise to. Um, it's quite interesting. It's something not uh, evident and uh, that needs to be thought about. And uh, that's it. Next uh, chapter is uh, in the end uh, validation methods, both numerical and experimental. But for the moment, I say goodbye. Ciao.